Item 10. 10B, adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a contract amendment with HB Consulting Group, Inc. to provide overall project management, engineering services, construction contract administration, and construction inspection services for the Crestmore Neighborhood Reconstruction Project in an amount not to exceed $1,847,500. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. The item before you tonight uh, seeks to amend an existing contract that was originally entered uh, between uh, HBCG, our project manager for the Crestmore Rebuild Project, and the City in June of 2011. Um, that project, uh, that contract was established for the pur purpose of securing project management and inspection services to complete the broad array of projects that are now anticipated for completion through and funded by the Crestmore Trust Fund uh, that was established um, in the months immediately following the September 2010 uh, gas line explosion and fire. Um, while at the time the, the original contract was entered in June of 2011, a number of months uh, following the initial explosion, um, at that time the full extent of the work that would ultimately be contemplated for completion was not yet defined. Um, over the next several years, uh, as that rebuild project has progressed, the subsequent definition of the full range of the projects anticipated in that comprehensive rebuild program have been identified at a total cost of approximately, at a total construction cost of approximately $34 million. I would just note um, in that regard that the $50 million trust fund had a variety of purposes envisioned uh, when it was originally established and as it has been utilized. Um, primary among those, of course, is the physical rebuild of the neighborhood. And as I've indicated, we're currently estimating that total construction cost at approximately $34 million. Um, that amount does not include the subject matter of our discussion tonight, the um, soft costs, if you will, of the various projects, um, including, among others, the engineering design that has already been completed uh, for most of the projects, and the project management and inspection, which, of course, is the topic um, before you tonight. As the scope of the projects to be completed has been refined and expanded, HBCG has been continuously instrumental to the process. And so too has there been a need for amendment of the contract uh, with the consulting group. The contract was previously amended uh, one time in September of 2012. Since that time, additional projects have been identified for completion of the full rebuild of the neighborhood, notably including the, complete, the complete replacement of private sewer laterals to 325 homes in the neighborhood. Um, this, this work I'm using as an example of the extent and the level of uh, work that is being provided and will continue to be required of HBCG. Um, in your staff report, the written staff report is a, is a longer list of, of other issues that have arisen and have driven the need for the amendment that's currently in front of you. The sewer lateral replacement work has been in process over the past year and has it required an extensive and unusual level of direct coordination with the many property owners in the neighborhood related to issues ranging from uh, direct communication uh, to explain the legal forms that are necessary to allow the city's contractor the right of entry to do work on private property, to coordination with residents about the specifics of how they will be impacted by the work, and how in many cases that will include digging trenches through newly installed landscaping in uh, families' uh, front yards, and even trenching through newly installed driveway pavers. Beyond this unique type of project work on private property, and again, I would um, uh, just suggest that uh, the amount of work 
uh, directly on private property is highly unusual for a, a municipal entity to be completing um, precisely because of some of the uh, complications and difficulties that can arise, as you can imagine, in doing work um, on uh, individual private properties. Um, in, beyond that work, the Council is aware that the Crestmore neighborhood is continuing and will continue to experience great disruption as the city works to complete full replacement of both the below ground and the above ground infrastructure, including water and sewer main lines and distribution lines, and coming soon, the replacement of all of the above ground infrastructure, including sidewalks, street paving, street lights, and public area landscape. Um, we anticipate that as disruptive as this work has already been within the neighborhood to the residents who are still uh, working to recover from the uh, effects of the explosion, uh, we expect that this next phase of work will actually be one of the more um, disruptive because it will all be out um, right in, in front of the homes and uh, uh, affecting traffic and the like on a regular daily basis. The neighborhood has requested and HBCG has increasingly been called upon to provide a very high level of direct coordination with uh, nearly every family in the entire neighborhood. The service level currently being provided is comparable with that initially st established by the city and conducted by the city directly um, over the approximately the first 18 months following the explosion. This personalized level of service not only um, is necessary, uh, this personalized level of service goes well beyond that which is typically necessary to conduct uh, normal project management and construction inspection services with the type of project that we are continuing to complete. HBCG and the city have received uh, many positive comments from residents and it's clear that uh, neighbors are relying on this uh, level of service. HBCG employs up to five individuals um, conducting management and inspection services at any given time to support all facets of the necessary work and is prepared to see the project through to its completion. Um, the proposed contract amendment is expensive. Um, it is in the total amount of $1.85 million. Combined with the previous contract extension in September of 2012 and with the original contract amount, the total cost of the um, uh, inspection and project management contract work is approximately $3.7 million. Um, this amount, while large by anybody's uh, uh, estimation, is in fact quite comparable to the typical range of uh, cost associated with typical construction projects. Um, those costs for construction management, project management, and construction inspection would typically range at the low end from 12% to roughly 15% or perhaps even a little bit more of construction costs for the project. As I mentioned before, the total uh, construction cost of the projects that it are currently anticipated is approximately $34 million. Uh, the total amount of this contract amendment when combined with the previous amounts of the contract with HC, uh, HBCG um, uh, at 12% um, represents uh, approximately that, that at 12 percent of the 34 million is roughly the same amount as we're proposing tonight, whereas the typical range up to 15 percent or even more uh, would represent substantially more. So with that um, and with the information that's included in your written staff report, I'm uh, available to answer any questions and Harry Burroughs, uh, the principal of the firm, is here tonight as well in case you have any specific questions to direct to him. Okay. Thank you. Any questions of staff for of Harry? Ken? My, my concern is, and, and, I, and I think the answer, you, you have the answer, is that, and, and it was in Harry's proposals, that it's all been budgeted. 
Yeah, thank it's you. It's all for included. It's all included in the big scheme of things, and so we're not seeing the trust, the remainder of the trust, dwindling, so that we can't achieve certain projects that we that we're looking at. Um, well, there's two answers to that okay. question, and the first is yes, and thank you for uh, reminding me to mention that the costs have been included in our cost projections for all of the projects that you have, and you've previously received that information. Um, that information suggests that all of the projects that the city has previously identified and um, wishes to see included in the full comprehensive neighborhood rebuild um, do exceed on an estimated cost basis. The, those costs do exceed the amount available um, out of the $50 million trust. So there will be additional decisions that need to be made and that uh, will occur incrementally as we further refine those projects. Uh, again, we're dealing with planning level costs right now. Um, for some projects that have not been exactly fully scoped. And so we do anticipate that uh, there's some additional work that needs to be done to precise those costs and um, frankly to uh, complete as many of the anticipated projects as possible within the, um, uh, within the parameters of the $50 million trust. Good, and, and, as, and as much as I and I think I can speak for the council and the residents that we value Harry's service up there. It's good to know that that number is not getting smaller due to Harry. <laughs> I think that's a fair I, can, I, that's a fair I, I, I couldn't think fast enough to make it sound better, but. Right. Okay. Through the chair, Rico. Can ask most of my questions, but. When will council get back kind of uh, out of the 50 we had anticipated? We've met with the residents, here were projects, here's what we have left, and now some decisions are gonna have to be made as you indicated. So at what point does, and I know we're probably getting those formulated in costs, but at what point do we see where we're at, know where we need to go, and know what we have in the bank? Well, I, um, we're happy to provide current information at any time uh, that the city council is interested. Um, there are, there remain um, some number of projects that are still, uh, um, our, our cost estimates have not changed uh, substantially because we have not um, obtained the pre-development information that allows us to precise those costs um, in any meaningful way. But I would estimate, um, we do anticipate being in a position to a return to the city council within approximately three to four months to award the contract for the phase four um, construction, which will be the above ground uh, infrastructure improvements. Um, while we have a planning number for that and it's relatively precise, we will know uh, when we award that contract how much it will cost. And I think that would be a, a reasonable time to come back with a more comprehensive update to the council. Anyone else, Michael? Through the chair, thank you. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the schedules that were provided in here, and these are actually uh, very useful, but uh, one, one thing that really stands out is how far off we are from our original schedule. And when we undertook this uh, many years ago, we were looking at, at overall completion in June of 2014, and that ship has long since sailed, and now we're looking at completion in December of 2017, and I'm thinking, to me, this looks like a lot of ongoing disruption to the neighborhood, which has been, um, it's, it's been an ongoing concern, and um, I would certainly like to see us complete this a, a lot sooner than, than 2017, and I mean, looking at even some of the smaller things that were on the schedule, I know there's a lot of new things on here, but there's a lot of old things that haven't been done, haven't even been started. Um, things like, uh, you know, the, the design of the park, uh, any work in the canyon, which is completely unrelated to what's going on in the streets. I, I don't see why none of that could have uh, been started earlier and maybe put us a little bit farther ahead, because I know a lot of this is, is new material, like I said, like I said before, but um, 
it, to me, it's concerning that, you know, this keeps dragging on, it keeps getting longer. Um, I know that's a little bit off topic for this. I know we're talking about the contract with Harry, and, and I, I certainly do appreciate what he's been doing up there, but um, I mean, it just it kind of jumps out at you when you see this uh, just extending out for so long. And um, I, I'd like to see us move a little faster on some of this stuff. I mean, the, the, uh, we've had some people contact us about the, uh, the tree replacement, and I see we're not even uh, looking at doing anything with that until the end of this year. And, I'm wondering why something like that we couldn't move forward with. Yeah, I, I'd like to ask Harry to respond um, more specifically. I mean, one of the one of the um, and he he can address uh, some of the issues associated with the pace of the phase four project, the above ground um, infrastructure replacement. Uh, I I can say that one of the things that has been a substantial issue in the pace of the project overall has been the. Um, need to complete that new project associated with the sewer laterals, which is a um, much, uh, well, it, it's no longer recent, but it was uh, a project which was identified and has had a very um, extended timeline, and that obviously needs to get done prior to the um, surface improvements, or it's highly desirable, so you're not tearing up new stuff again. Um, in order to be able to produce that project. So there have been a number of those types of issues uh, as we have tried to uh, both understand and complete the, the broad range of, of items. I would just mention as well, and I think you, you touched on it um, earlier, a number of the projects that are associated on that timeline, as I mentioned earlier, um, there is not uh, they, there's still a gap between the 50 million and the total cost of some of those projects, which makes their pace um, need to re re um, rely on making sure that uh, other projects, and, and notably again the surface uh, infrastructure rebuilding in the neighborhood proper, um, is fully funded, is completed, and uh, we we have a better sense of of what the available resources are going to be. So. To that point, I, I'm kind of concerned that this far along, we're still not sure about the cost of these things. Uh, we're, I mean, at, at this point, I would think we would be 100% sure this is what it's going to cost. Let's budget it and move on. I mean, if there's still a question about us going over budget on that, that that's a concern. Yeah, so I'm talking about projects like replacement of Fire Station 52. Mm -hmm. So we are in the process of completing um, pre-design work that will allow us to um, evaluate the seismic integrity of the area which, where that station is currently located on a, on a trace fault. And there, so we have a, the, that planning number, but we haven't designed the project. And okay. so um, though it's that kind of project uh, that I'm speaking about where we're still using the um, planning level numbers as opposed to the projects it, um, that you originally anticipated and that have been underway for a very long time. Uh, those numbers are, are solid, right? Uh, Every, and, everything, yeah. And are progressing um, to completion within the next several months. So would it be appropriate for us then to maybe revisit the entire package of, of uh, projects that we that we committed to and, and uh, reprioritize and decide if we want to move forward with some of the smaller ones that we absolutely know we can afford and, and get those uh, started and then the ones that are risky like the fire station maybe um, make those lower priorities as if, if we don't think that uh, We'll be able to fund them. We can certainly do that. Okay. Right. Is this on? It's on. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. Um, if I may, yes, there's uh, been two primary reasons for the, the um, push of the schedule. Um, from the original schedule that you saw here and, and this revised schedule. And it's, it's um, two, two different projects. One is the phase, what I call the phase three, or we call the phase three underground, which is the undergrounding of all the um, utilities, replacement of all the underground utilities in the bulk of the neighborhood. 
That project turns out was a lot more complicated, a lot more cumbersome, a lot more time consuming. We ran into some differing site conditions, um, underground conditions that weren't anticipated. And so that, that project's um, construction schedule lasted about nine months longer than we had anticipated originally scheduled. And then as, as um, the city manager stated, the um, um, sanitary sewer, upper sanitary sewer lateral program, that um, we've sort of sandwiched in between the completion of the phase three project and the surface improvement project so that we weren't having total disruption in the neighborhood at the same time. We, we've been refining some of the um, design elements of the surface improvement project that, that Connie mentioned was, is going to go out to bid here in about three to four months, in, including the final street light design and, and that system. So that, that design package is coming together. We should be on schedule. The schedule that's shown here actually doesn't take us out to 2017 for the work within the neighborhood. We're, we're hoping that we'll get that done by the end of 2016 so that all the work within the neighborhood will be done by the end of 16. The, the work that's pushed, that's shown on the schedule beyond that is um, some of the items like the fire station and other improvements. Uh, and also, unfortunately, things aren't always as simple as they seem for some of these other projects like the Sneath trees and the canyon work. Um, they're not as straightforward as the work within the um, neighborhood because that work, from an environmental standpoint, we were able to get a what's called a categorical exemption so that we could just charge forward, do that design work, and go into construction. Some of the other work down within the canyon, as well as the sneak trees, there's a lot of environmental constraints um, associated with those. So there's a lot of upfront environmental analysis that has to occur before we can even get into design work to even see, you know, really if it's feasible, if we're going to clear the environmental hurdles to, to do that work. And, you know, maybe, David, you can shed a little bit more light on that if I'm not explaining that um, clearly. But um, that's, that, that's sort of um, the hurdles that we have with some of the projects. So they're, their costs are still not defined. Okay. So what have we done then to uh, get us down that path of clearing those hurdles? Well, I think on both of those projects, um, we've engaged consultants that are now um, starting the work on um, the environmental constraints. We're looking at um, constraints mapping within the canyon, both from a geotechnical standpoint as well as an environmental standpoint. And um, I, I think we're also looking into some of the CEQA requirements around the um, Sneath trees um, replacement because there's a further complication. It's a scenic corridor, and, and that raises some other, other issues that, that need to be evaluated. Okay. It, it still seems to me like we've kind of put some of these things off a little too far, and um, I don't mean to beat up on you. I, I think you have been doing a, a really good job, but, um, you know, it's it's kind of it's kind of an opportunity to give you a little bit of a performance evaluation since you are coming back and asking for an extension of the contract. <laughs> uh, let me just say that um, I, I would definitely like to see us, you know, where we can um, multi-track any of these projects. I'd like to see more of that happen. Um, that, that's just me personally. I, I don't know what the rest of the council feels, but um, I think you're doing a good job with your. Uh, with your customer uh, service skills up there and keeping the, the residents happy. Um, I just, it, you know, as, as much as we like having you around, we'd like to finish this and, and Absolutely. give that neighborhood back to the, to the folks that, that have to live there. So. Absolutely. That's what we want as well. Thank you. And I agree with Michael. I think if there's a way we can double up or piggyback on some of this stuff, uh, I'd sure like to see it done. I know it's a, maybe a bigger imposition on the neighborhood, but they want to get it done too. And I think they've, right. they've been very patient uh, up to now. It's been coming on five years, so uh, a lot of work. And on a side note, uh, it's very good to have you back. Thank you. Yeah. Very good to be back. Great. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, if I could just add, add on to that. Now, look, I mean, really looking at it closely, I mean, it, it seems to be a very aggressive schedule now. Uh, if the neighbors up there knew that, that uh, you're going to start looking at des uh, designing, I didn't know that we were starting design on the Glenview Park as early as this month, and that construction would be uh, completed by a year, a year from now, so, or started a year from now. So I think, you know, my concern and possibly my colleagues is that we're not up to date on what, you know, you know what consultants and what design 
uh, and who is actually uh, uh, involved in some of these new projects. And so uh, I think it's probably a good idea that we do get an up-to-date on the new projects and, and possibly even throw in how uh, on schedule or ahead of schedule the you know, Castle Homes are doing, too. So there's you know, a lot of activity, and we want to be uh, you know, really up-to-date on all that. So appreciate it. To the chair, I, I would agree as far as uh, update, yes. Uh, expedite, if possible, safely, yes. Um, having uh, an assessment, and I know you said you, we need three or four months of where we're at within the budget we approved to the projects that were spoke to the neighborhood about, um, but I would like to, to see that um, as much as uh, possible. And on the park, and I know the design is about to take place for the park, have we also been coordinating with the Park and Recreation Commission to have their involvement or input or a subcommittee, or are they? Carrie, would you like to? Um, I can answer that question. Um, we will be coordinating with the uh, Parks and Recreation Commission and um, primarily with the neighborhood. There's been a very strong mm -hmm. uh, sense of um, direct neighborhood interest in making sure that, and there are a variety of different opinions and there's going to be, I anticipate, some issues that are um, different people affected by the um, disaster have strongly different opinions about um, how, that, how that park area should be designed and, and utilized in the future. So the answer, the short answer is yes, and I expect that it will be um, a um, interesting and 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 probably um, wide-ranging discussion. Maybe to even start at that level, but I would very much agree there is going to be very you know, opinions about mm -hmm. what should be in the park and how it might be designed, and mm -hmm. um, also you know might help the commission to be uh, engaged in that as well and see if they can assist where they can. Yeah, just to, to add further to that, um, staff met, I believe it was about a week and a half ago, with uh, our consultant for the um, park visioning process um, to help facilitate the, the public dialogue. And um, the, the schedule that came out of that meeting is we're, we're hoping to have that per first public visioning meeting um, as early as um, early to mid-September to kick off the park process. Yeah. Anything else? Action by the council. I'll introduce the resolution. By Mary Salazar. Aye. Council Member Medina. Aye. Council Member Ibera. Aye. Council Member O'Connell. Aye. Mayor Ruane. Aye.